trucking in the 90s. It's a whole new ball game with new regulations, new players, and a new competition. The trucks of the 90s are different too. They're sleeker, more efficient, with smooth aerodynamic designs that slip through the air for greater fuel economy. But there is no such thing as a free lunch. Reducing aerodynamic drag increases the work done by the foundation brakes. Today's trucks place demands on brake systems that can be as much as three times greater than for the trucks of the 70s. Brake service has never been something you could afford to ignore, but with today's free rolling trucks, proper maintenance is more important than ever, especially with current emphasis on truck safety that is sure to result in more frequent inspections. And with working steer axle brakes, now mandatory on many vehicles, you have even more brake maintenance to consider. For this reason, Eaton Corporation, Axle and Brake Division presents Brake Maintenance and Overhaul, a program intended to familiarize you with brake service common to our family of 15, 16 and a half, and 18 inch steer and drive axle brakes. This program will be based on Eaton Brake Service Manual EB32 for 16 and a half and 18 inch brakes and for 15 inch steer axle brakes EB31. These manuals have exploded views like this one showing proper brake component nomenclature to help you identify the components we'll be talking about. Eaton manuals contain complete service instructions, so we won't discuss every procedure in step-by-step -step detail. Instead, this program will describe selected periodic maintenance and overhaul procedures. After viewing this program, you will be able to execute the precautionary steps that must be taken to safely prepare a vehicle for brake service. Explain how brake adjustment is checked and how necessary adjustments are made and verified. Describe proper use of the Eaton brake adjustment and lining wear guide and define acceptable service intervals for the key procedures covered in this program. Let's begin by showing you a maintenance procedure you should be doing every week, checking brake adjustment. Please note that for Eaton automatic slack adjusters, no periodic maintenance adjustment should be required after proper installation. Caution, improper installation may result in dragging brakes. Aside from initial installation, manual adjustment of Eaton auto slacks need only be accomplished at the time of any foundation brake reline. For a complete description of all installation and maintenance procedures for Eaton automatic slack adjusters, refer to Eaton Service Manual EB22. Checking brake adjustment is a simple two-step procedure. The first step is to verify brake setup with the system at rest. With no air applied to the brakes and the wheels securely blocked to prevent vehicle movement, measure from the face of the air chamber to the center line of the slack adjuster clevis pin. This distance must be two and five eighths inches, plus or minus a sixteenth. Mack trucks and Eaton trailer axles are set to a different dimension and will not be addressed in this program. Remember, air chambers have limited stroke. This setting assures optimal pushrod travel and leverage forces for maximum braking power. If necessary, reposition the clevis to meet this setting. When within range, measure and record the exact distance. The second step in checking brake adjustment is to determine applied stroke. You will need the help of a friend at this point, but make sure you know someone who cares that your brakes are working properly. Keeping your hands clear of the push rod and slack adjuster arm, have an assistant make and hold an 80 PSI brake application. Again, measure from the face of the air chamber to the center line of the clevis pin. Record this distance. When you subtract the at rest dimension from the 80 PSI application dimension, the difference will be applied stroke. Compare applied stroke to the values in the service manual. If the clevis moves beyond the maximum, the brakes require adjustment. When excessive applied stroke shows a correction is necessary, Eaton brakes are adjusted to achieve proper free stroke. The only difference between free stroke and applied stroke is the method used to move the slack adjuster from rest. Applied stroke is measured under an 80 PSI brake application. Free stroke is measured using a lever to move the slack adjuster. With a large screwdriver, pry the slack adjuster in the direction of application until the shoes contact the drum. Measure from the face of the air chamber to the center line of the clevis pin. Record the distance. 
From this dimension, subtract the at-rest dimension recorded earlier. The difference between the two is free stroke. Compare the value you get to the range given in the service manual. For 15 by 4 steer axle brakes, free stroke should be between 3 8 and 1 half inch. For 16 and a half or 18 inch drive or steer axle brakes, it should be 3 8 to 5 8 of an inch. If free stroke is outside the acceptable range, adjust the slack adjuster. For manual slack adjusters, depress the locking sleeve on the adjuster nut and turn it in the direction required. Turning clockwise will decrease free stroke. Counterclockwise will increase free stroke. After making the maintenance adjustment, be sure that the locking sleeve has returned to its locked position. Remeasure free stroke and adjust if necessary until an acceptable stroke is attained. For automatic slack adjusters, please refer to Eaton Service Manual EB22 for proper proceedings. Eaton appreciates that not everyone keeps a service manual and tape measure in their truck. So we have come up with a convenient pocket-sized tool to make adjusting your Eaton brakes even easier. Using the Eaton brake adjustment and lining wear guide, you won't need a ruler or service manual, but you still need a stout screwdriver and a good friend. The guide is designed for use on Eaton 15-inch steer axle brakes, and 16 and a half or 18 inch steer or drive axle brakes. It's not intended for Mack vehicles, trailer axle brakes, or vehicles equipped with automatic slack adjusters. Illustrations and instructions for use appear on the guide with markings at appropriate distances to eliminate the need for a measuring tool. Although there may not be room to correctly position the guide for every possible brake configuration, it certainly fits in a shirt pocket better than a service manual. Use the front side of the guide to determine when your brakes require adjustment. After verifying the at rest distance of two and five eighths inches with this scale, applied stroke is checked against these maximum values. With the guide positioned as you see here, compare Clevis pin movement under an 80 PSI brake application to the correct maximum mark for your air chamber size. Movement past the mark tells you your brakes need adjusting. The other side is used when an adjustment is necessary. The color-coded scales are used to set proper free stroke. The gray scale is for 15-inch steer axle brakes, and the blue scale is for 16 and a half or 18-inch steer or drive axle brakes. With the guide positioned as shown, free stroke is checked using a lever and is increased or decreased as necessary. Another helpful feature is found in the lower right-hand corner of the backside. This small tab and black rectangle can be used to determine when your shoes must be relined. We'll show you how that's done later. Five copies of the brake adjustment and lining wear guide were included with this program. If you need additional copies, they can be ordered from any Eaton regional office or by calling 1-800-TCM-HELP. After making a brake adjustment, verify that the brakes are not dragging by rotating the wheels or by tapping the drum lightly with a hammer while listening for a sharp ringing sound. If the brake cannot be adjusted to the recommended free stroke without drag, it's a sign of trouble somewhere in the brake assembly. Check for an improperly assembled brake, improperly riveted linings, damaged shoes or linings, or excessive drum out of round. You must verify proper brake operation after making an adjustment or any other repairs. Have your assistant apply the brakes to 80 PSI and hold. Check all airline fittings and air chambers for leakage. Apply and release the brakes while observing the operation of the slack adjusters on each axle. As the brakes are applied and released, the slacks should move in unison. If this is not the case, look carefully for a clogged line or bad air chamber that could prevent this and take corrective action. Drive the vehicle at low speeds in a safe area and make several brake applications to verify safe operation and lack of pulling, grabbing, or noise. If you notice any, investigate and repair the problem before releasing the vehicle for service. Never release a vehicle for service without verifying safe brake operation. 
Brake components need regular lubrication. Anytime the vehicle is in the shop for a chassis lube, the air chamber bracket and slack adjuster should be pressure lubricated using the specified chassis lubricant. This procedure allows contaminants to be flushed from the slack and should be completed at least every three months or 50,000 miles. Pressure lube air chamber brackets through the grease fitting until grease flows out of the end of the tube or around the slack adjuster splines. Grease must not flow out of the cam head end of the tube. If it does, the seal is defective and must be replaced. Lubricate the slack adjuster as well through the appropriate grease fitting. Every time the drum is removed, or at least every third month, be sure to visually inspect the brake assembly for wear or damage. Detailed component inspections are normally done when the brakes are overhauled or at a minimum every other year. Rather than go through every step in an overhaul right now, let's walk through a typical brake shoe reline job. And along the way, we'll comment on a few key overhaul procedures. Before you start any brake service, requiring removal of the tire and wheel, you must take the following preliminary steps to ensure your safety. Set the parking brake and block the wheels to prevent any vehicle movement. Raise the axle being serviced with a jack and support it on suitable stands. Never work under a vehicle supported only by a jack. Cage spring-type brake chambers as recommended by the vehicle manufacturer. Remove the axle shaft, outer wheel nut, locking washer, and inner wheel nut as specified in the manual. Gently pull on the drum until the outer wheel bearing comes free. Remove the drum by pulling outboard while rocking from side to side. If the drum does not come off easily, do not risk damage by forcing it. Back off the slack adjusters before continuing. Vacuum all brake dust from the drum and brake assembly before inspection. Never use compressed air to remove brake dust. If necessary, use a greaseless solvent to clean up any spilled oil. In the course of an overhaul, clean all brake parts following sound shop practices. Use a commercially available shop solvent. Gasoline should never be used. It is unsafe in the workshop environment. After cleaning, wipe all parts dry with a lint-free cloth. Parts exposed to road dirt should be cleaned with a wire brush, including the outside of the brake drum. Excessive dirt buildup on the drum can retain heat. Inspect the drum for cracks, heat checks, glazing, grooving, run out and out of round. Heat checking like in the boxed area can often be repaired. Unfortunately, this drum is also cracked and must be replaced. Drums that can be repaired without exceeding the manufacturer's maximum diameter and run out specs may be returned to service. Never reuse a drum if it exceeds the manufacturer's maximum diameter or run out tolerance. To assist you with a quick and simple brake shoe removal, Eaton recommends a notched screwdriver such as this tool from Snap-on, part number BT518, particularly with the heavier ES brake springs. Using such a tool, pry the shoe away from the cam to stretch the return spring. Remove the cam roller and pin. Repeat these steps for the other shoe and roller pin. Push the lower shoe up toward the cam to unhook and remove the return spring. Lift the upper shoe up, over, and off of the anchor pin, allowing the lower shoe to come off. Cam rollers and pins, return springs, and retainer springs should all be discarded any time there is evidence of stretching, wear, or damage. Take a moment to inspect the brake linings. Normally, worn blocks will exhibit a tapered profile that is characteristic of the Eaton standard brake design. Note that Eaton ES brakes exhibit different wear patterns because of the lining's pre-designed taper. Always replace brake linings if they are cracked or contaminated. We mentioned earlier that the Eaton brake adjustment and lining wear guide can be used to determine when a reline is necessary. The black rectangle on the back of the guide is sized to correspond to the minimum allowable lining block thicknesses for steer axle and drive axle brakes. Position it as required to make a visual comparison of the minimum thickness to the remaining lining. Another check of lining condition is to measure from the contact surface to the rivet heads. 
When worn to within one sixteenth inch from any rivet head, the linings must be replaced. This is easily checked by holding the guide as shown and inserting the tab into the shallowest rivet hole. If the end of the tab touches the rivet head before the bottom edge of the guide touches the block, replace the linings. Carefully inspect the shoes any time they're off the vehicle. Look for a bent or cracked web or table, broken wells, loose rivets, or elongated rivet holes. Replace the shoes if any of these signs are present. Check the anchor pin and camshaft roller recesses in the shoe webs for elongation or visible wear. If a shoe span gauge is available, check shoe span and compare it to the specs in the service manuals. Anytime you have the brake shoes off, it's a good idea to check the condition of the camshaft bushings in the air chamber bracket. This can be done quickly and easily by measuring camshaft radial play with a dial indicator. Mount a suitable indicator with the plunger referencing the cam face at 90 degrees to the cam bearing journal. Zero the indicator. Move the cam head radially back and forth and note the maximum reading. In a similar manner, mount a dial indicator at the slack adjuster end of the camshaft and repeat the procedure. Total deflections over 20 thousandths of an inch in either location indicate the need for bushing replacement. The spider should also be inspected any time the brake shoes are off. Check the anchor pin for looseness or grooving more than 31 thousandths of an inch below the original surface. Visually inspect for cracks around bolt holes in the cam area and around the anchor pin. Replace the spider if you see any of these defects. If your camshaft radial play is okay, you normally wouldn't remove the camshaft when doing a reline. But at overhaul, you routinely would. So we will quickly show you what to look for. Remove the slack adjuster and camshaft as described in the manual and thoroughly clean the camshaft for inspection. Look for brunelling, cracking, or flat spots on the camshaft head. Replace the camshaft if a ridge can be felt between worn areas and the cam head surface. Examine bushing journals for roughness or corrosion. Check the spline end for cracks and worn or deformed splines. Replace the camshaft if any of these conditions are found. While you have the camshaft out, it's also a good idea to check the air chamber bracket bushings for roughness or wear, and all bracket fasteners for proper torque. The guidelines in the service manual will help you determine which components to replace at overhaul. We can't spend a lot of time on the subject, but would like to show you the replacement procedure you'll be doing if your truck flunked the camshaft radial play test. Remove the air chamber bracket as described in the service manual and clean it for inspection. Look for a bent, broken, or cracked arm or cracked wells. Drive out the old bushings with a punch. Install new bushings with a suitable piloted driver to the depth specified in the service manuals. New grease seals are installed flush with the end of the tube. Both seals must be installed with the lip side, the side with the spring, facing the slack adjuster end of the bracket. Improperly oriented seals may allow grease to exit the camshaft head end of the bracket and contaminate brake linings. Radial play should be checked after replacing the camshaft bushings. If it is still excessive, replace the camshaft. Before we return to our reline job, it's important to note that for best brake performance and reduced future maintenance costs, Eaton does not recommend brake relining. As lining wears, brake shoes tend to stretch to maintain full contact within the drum during brake application. Because of this tendency to stretch, a reline shoe is likely to result in uneven contact against the drum and ultimately reduce braking performance and excessive drum wear. Instead, Eaton recommends replacing worn shoes with top-spec brake replacement kits, available through your top-spec distributor or a rebuilt brake, now available from your closest Eaton authorized brake rebuilder. It is also important to note that for Eaton ES brakes, a light film of grease should be applied to the roller recess of the shoe webs at each reline or any time the shoe assembly is installed. However, do not lubricate anchor pin recesses. Okay, now back to our reline job of standard Eaton brakes. Use a suitable riveting mandrel to push out the old rivets. 
Do not drill out old rivets or cut off the upset heads with a chisel because you might enlarge or elongate the rivet holes. Clean the shoe table with a wire brush and paint the shoes with a rust inhibitive coating. Be sure you are using the proper lining block material as a replacement. Insert one quarter inch diameter, one half inch long rivets into all holes and hold them in place with masking tape. Begin riveting at the center of each lining segment and progress uniformly toward each end. Check the installation by trying to insert a six thousandth inch feeler gauge between the lining and shoe table along the edges. It should not be possible to insert the feeler gauge in this manner anywhere along the edge with the exception of the outside ends beyond the last row of rivets. Complete assembly instructions appear on the service manuals, so we won't repeat them here. But since we interrupted our reline story to pull the camshaft, we should mention a few things to watch for when you put it back in. Be sure the camshaft being installed, either new or used, is correct for the application. Note how the ES brake cam differs from the standard brake cam. Also, watch that you correctly replace the cam head washer during ES brake reassembly. Also, note how the slacks will rotate with push rod extension. And check whether the roller would start to ride up on the convex slope of the cam head. The cam he has in his hand is the wrong one for this brake. Apply a thin film of grease on the inside of the camshaft bushings and seals and on the spline area of the camshaft. Do not grease the camshaft head area. Carefully slip the camshaft into the bracket. Install the thick washer and slack adjuster and then the thin washer and snap ring. Be sure to check camshaft axial play every time the camshaft is installed. Mount a suitable dial indicator with the plunger referencing the cam head at 90 degrees to the cam face. Pull inboard on the slack adjuster end of the camshaft to take up any end play and zero the dial indicator. Push the camshaft outboard and note the maximum reading. Add or subtract washers to adjust axial play to between five thousandths and forty-five thousandths of an inch with the slack adjuster centered between the bracket end and snap ring groove. To finish up our reline, let's mount the brake shoes. Please note that Eaton extended service brakes components should not be mounted in standard brake assemblies. Please refer to Eaton Technical Service Bulletin number 88-104 for interchangeability of standard Eaton brake products to Eaton ES brakes. Place the correct upper shoe in position and hook a new return spring to it. As you replace the springs, pay particular attention to the color coding for proper replacement. Remember, red springs indicate high mount, black for low mount, and brown springs for ES brake shoes. Attach new retainer springs to the shoe, hooks pointing out. Hook the lower shoe to the retainer spring. Rotate the lower shoe upward and hook the return spring to it. Use the snap-on tool or a large screwdriver to stretch the return spring to allow insertion of a new cam roller and pin on the upper shoe web. Repeat the process on the lower shoe. Complete final assembly following the instructions in the service manual, adjust the brakes, and you're done with your reline. Of course, you must do a performance check before releasing the vehicle for service. There are other brake service issues we have not covered today, but those discussions are best left to our service manuals. You've always known how important brake maintenance is. Now you have seen how easy it is when you use Eaton technical service manuals. Remember, always use the proper tools for the job and take the time to do a thorough, safe repair. Safety, like brake operation, is something that can never be taken for granted. On behalf of Eaton Corporation, Axel and Brake Division, thank you for your attention.